c'est parti Hello dear entrepreneur, hello everyone, Daniel Gounou here. Thank you again uh, for joining me today on my Facebook Live. I am running very late, but I'm, I'm sure that the content of what I have to share today will be very uh, useful for you. So today we are going to talk about uh, moving expense, uh, deductible moving expense that you can claim on your tax return. So if you are an individual, you are yourself on Employed, or maybe you're just uh, a student. There are some expense that you can um, that you can claim on your tax return when you have to move for from a place to another place, maybe for work or maybe for to go to school. So today we are going to talk about all those moving expense that are deductible and that you can claim on your tax return because there are so many expense that are included in into that topic that maybe you know about or you don't know about. And if you know about maybe your friend doesn't know about so please if you like the video make sure you share within your channel you share within your social media and also you like and comment and also if uh, within the live uh, the live video or maybe if you watch the video later on and you have any question about the topic or any other topic please feel free to drop down the com uh, the question on the comment box below and I will make sure uh, to provide an appropriate answer for that and also the video will be in French and English so if the f I usually do the first part in English and later on uh, almost like the middle I will do another the same the same content in French for everyone who is watching and that's only uh, who only speak uh, French so with that we don't notice we're going to start so I'm going to talk again uh, today about moving expense uh, of uh, we are talking about the tax year 2016 so if during the tax the 2016 you did uh, travel you did move maybe from a place from a city to another city you allow uh, by the law uh, by the CIA law Canadian law to claim some uh, expense on your tax return and that is completely legal there are three cases you can be maybe a self-employed and then you need to move from a, a city to another city or from a place to another place maybe because you are you wanted to be closer to the market that you sell within your business or uh, maybe you are looking to be closer to a resource maybe for example you are a restaurant owner and that you are your restaurant or the place that you wanted to open your restaurant is a little bit far from where you live and you need to move to get closer to your restaurant then you will be allowed to claim all the moving expense that will be related to that to that moving on your tax return and also if you are an employee maybe during the year you find a new job in another location and you need to be closer to that job so all the expenses related to the moving to, for changing that location will be deductible or maybe you are a student and you have to start school in a different place from where you stay or from your home or your parent house so the expense related to that will be deductible the main thing is you have to make sure that those expenses are reasonable that that is first those expenses are reasonable and then make sure that it the purpose is to get closer to your point your place of work to get closer to your school to get closer to your business maybe your market your business area or the your place of business it has to be at least for to get 40 kilometer closer so means what if i found a job for example i will take an example right i live in toronto and i live in downtown toronto and i found a new job i already uh working in Tor uh, downtown toronto and then i found another job uh, in Tr still in the same area toronto downtown toronto and maybe i was just living in a one bedroom apartment but because that new job is paying me well i want to move maybe to upgrade and go to a, uh, to, to live in a condo that moving is not deductible because there is no point uh, from the tax point of view to move because you are not there's no purpose you are not it is not to get closer to your place of work but it is just a luxury that you want to offer for to yourself so any move that you make for a personal reason is not deductible it has to be for a purpose 
for maybe because to want to get uh, closer to your workplace or maybe you want to get closer to your school or maybe you want to get closer to your market or your business area or maybe the pla your place of business so those are the main the very uh, main point that need to be uh, met before uh, uh, starting to, uh, to make the claim and also you have to make sure that the expense that you want to claim on your tax return you didn't claim uh, they were not paid for before because for example there are some uh, workplace when they hire you and, or when you, you get a job they pay your relocation fee they pay your relocation clause for example if you have to move from Alberta to Ontario and that your work, uh, your place, your new place of work pay provided for your plane ticket, for all your expense, your moving expense. You cannot come back again uh, on your tax return and then uh, uh, ask to, to be reimbursed for that. So if those expenses are already paid for, uh, they are already reimbursed or paid on your behalf. Or uh, it can be a student who is working on a project and but they already have a grant or a scholarship for that project or paid for all the expense or the travel expense they cannot claim that again on their tax return so you have to make sure that your those expenses were not paid for uh, first or that they were not reimbursed to you so you have to make sure that they and also that you didn't deduct that on a previous tax return because if you make a travel or I don't know a move in 2015 you cannot come back again in 2016 and claim that expense so you have to make sure that it is not first it was not reimbursed to you it was not already paid on a previous uh, deduct on a previous tax return or it was not paid for I talk about relocation costs for example uh, if you are moving because of a job so once those all those um, all, all those criteria all those requirements are met you are now then are, uh, allowed to claim uh, those um, expense you also one thing that i forgot to mention is you have to make sure that the expense you claim an expense when that expense happened so i'm going to take an example let's say uh in uh, at the end of 2016 i got a new job i was interviewed and then i got a new job that is going to start um, in 2017 so later on maybe let's say later on this month right but i was already confirmed in the position at the end of this uh, uh last year so let's say december 2016 and when interview I paid for my plane ticket right in December because I wanted to take advantage of the disc of, uh, of some kind of discount right so I paid out of my pocket the, uh, the plane ticket in December 2016 so now when I'm doing my tax return of 2016 you will think that of course I, I, I can claim that expense since I, I did pay for that in 2016 you will think that okay it is okay to claim that on your 2016 tax return but no it is not okay you can only claim when the relocation really happened so the year when the relocation is happening will be 2017 because that is the year that I'm taking function on my new job so that is only then that you're going to claim all the uh, relocation all the moving expense that happened that were that were consequent of this new job so always make sure that it is only the year when the expense occurred the, the year when for example you start a school or this you started that new job or you launched that new uh, business only that during that year for that year that you are going to claim uh, the moving expense on your tax return i hope i'm not going too fast if you have any question again uh, please free feel free to drop uh, in the comment uh, the question on the comment box and i would be okay i would be fine to to provide an answer so once all those requirements are, are met or once you make sure you did make sure that the the expense really qualified to be uh, claimed now we are going to talk about i'm going to talk about some example of expense that are eligible to be claimed on your tax return the first one will be the transportation and storage expense so if during a move you up you pay for move uh, you pay some movers to help you pack your things 
those expenses are deductible. For example, if you pay for U-Haul, you pay some kind of insurance during the packaging or maybe the, the storage of your household item, those expenses are deductible. Also, the travel travel expense. If, for example, you are buying a ticket, a plane ticket, a train ticket, or I don't know, a car uh, to help with your moving, those or you maybe you rent a car to help with your moving, those expenses are deductible. If but if, for example, you use your personal car to help with the moving, for example, I live in Toronto and then I found a job in Montreal. Uh, sorry for all my US uh, folks, um, mainly taking an example of, uh, in Canada because that is what I'm like almost 100% familiar with. So, if for example I live in Toronto and then I found a new job in Montreal and then I have to, I take my own car, I pack all my things in the, in the trunk and then I drive uh, to Montreal to get to my new job. You will make sure that you track the kilometer, the number of kilometer that you drive within Toronto and Montreal, because according to Revenue Canada, there, there are two methods that you can claim all those uh, vehicle expense, all those travel expense. They can use the the the, sim the simplified. Okay, you can use the actual method. The actual method means that you will keep all the receipt. If, for example, you pay for the the, the gas for your car, you pay for the, I don't know, parking, or you pay for insurance, Every, all the expense that you pay for your car to help with the moving. You will make sure that you keep all the receipt because that is the actual, as the name says, actual method means that it will only be based on, on what you actually paid for during uh, your travel. But in the other hand, you have the simplify method. The simplify method means that uh, Revenue Canada, the CIA, already set some flat rate that, okay, if you are able just to prove that, okay, because you were in Toronto, you, get in, you got a new job in Montreal, just the fact that, okay, with maybe your employment uh, later or so on, that only uh, is that only is okay to justify your moving and so revenue canada sets a fixed flat rate if you use your car you make sure you check the number of kilometers and then they pay i think the rainbows up to 54 cents per kilometer that you drove to go to your new place your new uh, workplace and it, they also they are reimbursement for meal and, and uh, for the, the cost of meal and accommodation. So if during the travel, if for example you are traveling from Toronto to Montreal, uh, I don't know, it, and it takes you a day or I don't know two days to make the travel with your whole uh, family, all the, all the meal that you will pay, be paying during that travel are reimbursed for up to fifty one dollar per day per person. Those are small things that a lot of people doesn't know about, and sometimes maybe you just maybe you just neglect that uh, that thing, and that takes a lot of money because on all this uh, live video that I'm trying to make every day, it is because I want to educate uh, people that when yes, there are software that sometimes you use to to help do your tasks. But it is very useful and it is very important to look for an individual, an accountant, to help you with your tax because they are just those uh, small particular steps, small tips that only an individual who is keeping his, himself or herself, in my case, uh, accountable and very up to date with the law, the tax law, will know. Your software will not know that. And then you will find yourself at the end of the year paying a lot of tax, uh, a lot of tax things that you, sh you 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 could have avoid if you was you 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 were to hire someone professional to help do your tax. So always it is good to look for cheap's way, but it is also to look uh, good uh, to look for a, a professional because the professional is going to help you maximize your tax return. You will see someone who is not making a lot of money, but also is at the end of the year is owing a lot of tax to the, the, the CIA for nothing. And then they have a lot of expense that they could have uh, claimed on their tax return that they are not uh, 
they, they don't know about so that's why i'm doing all those videos every day because i am want to like educate people about those expense those small expense that sometimes you you, you will not think about but that are really uh, something that you can claim and you can deduct that will help reduce your income and and and, and then pay less tax at the end of the year so that's what we are saying i'm talking too much sorry about that so back to what we were saying i was talking about example of moving expense right so i did talk about travel expense I did talk about vehicle expense for those of you people who use their vehicle, who use their car to move, uh, to help with their moving. If I drive my car to move from my new place or from my new house, you will make sure that you check the kilometer because Revenue Canada rambles up to seven, uh, up to up to 54 cents per kilometer that you drove to your new location. And also you are allowed to claim your meal, everything that you buy during on, on the road. Uh, to eat every uh, all the food you are uh, you can be rambos you can claim up to fifty one dollars per person per day so you if you are traveling i don't know with a big family of ten person you are allowed to claim fifty one dollar per person per day on your tax return and also you are allowed to claim all the accommodation for example if you pay for the hotel for people, for example, who are traveling, I don't know, from Alberta to, I don't know, Edmonton, Toronto, or Quebec, sometimes you have to uh, drive and then you have to stay in a hotel on the way uh, to your new location. So all those hotel fee, all those accommodation and lodging fee or expense are deductible on your tax return. Also, if because of the new job, you have to uh, cancel your lease because I know in Toronto, usually you will pay, uh, you will sign a contract, a lease for a year location, right? A, a year a rental. But if during the year you have to interrupt your lease because you have to move out of, I don't know, to another location, usually your rental, uh, your rental office will ask you to pay for cancellation fee. Those cancellation fee are deductible on your tax return. Also, if when you get uh, to your new place and then the, you, it takes time to you maybe to find a new house or a new apartment and maybe you have to stay in a hotel for a few days before you, uh, finding your new place, you are allowed to claim up to 15 days of hotel fee or uh, maybe, I don't know, where, where you choose to stay, but you are allowed to claim up to a maximum of 15 days. That is something that a lot of people doesn't know about. You are allowed to pay for all the administration fee that you can pay, maybe if uh, at your new place, maybe to make the, your address change or your driving license or your your, your plate, your, your vehicle uh, uh, licensing permit or all those administration fee that happened because you did change location all those fees are deductible you can also deduct uh if for example you used to have a home a house and then you have to leave your house and then move to another province or another location and then find a new house that house that you let uh, you, you you left behind if for example you have to, to sell that house all the fee relating to the the, the selling of that house is are, are deductible all the fee maybe for to take care of the maintenance of that house uh while you are looking for a a, a, a a potential buyer for that house all those fee are deductible so make sure that you get in touch with a professional when you are doing your tax return otherwise you'll be losing a lot a lot a lot of money that you could have saved on your tax return as i always say i'm available if anyone has a question or if you have any concern or any question that is tax related I am available. You can post a comment whenever you are watching the video, if it is live or if it is even later on. I will be very, very happy to assist you. So now I'm going to, sw to switch in French for all my Canadian French people who are watching the video, right? Donc, salut à tous, Daniel Gounod ici. Je suis très contente euh, de vous avoir encore aujourd'hui pour ma vidéo, euh, les vidéos quotidiennes que je fais pour aider les gens qui sont comme ça, qui la pleine période de taxes. 
je sais que beaucoup d'entre vous sont en train comme de réfléchir, de s'y inscrire, ouais. <rire> de réfléchir comment ils vont faire pour quand même réduire, payer le moins d'impôts ou bien euh, de réduire au maximum leur, euh, leur revenu pour pouvoir payer le moins d'impôts possible. Donc, euh, tout au long de cette vidéo, je vais parler des, euh, effectivement des frais de déménagement parce que beaucoup de gens ne savent pas que quand ils déménagent d'un lieu, d'une place à une autre ou bien comme d'une ville à une autre pour peut-être des raisons d'emploi ou bien par rapport à l'école, ils sont euh, comme à là où ils sont permis. Parce que désolé si parfois les termes en anglais get, get, just got mixed in the French. Donc, ils sont quand même permis de réclamer dans leur retour d'impôt de, 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 le remboursement de ces dépenses. Donc, si au courant de l'année 2016, vous avez eu à payer des frais de déplacement, des frais de déménagement, je, euh, cette vidéo, c'est juste quand même pour vous donner quelques astuces comment maximiser sur ces dépenses-là. Parce que il peut y avoir des petites choses que vous ne saviez pas que, que effectivement vous devriez mettre dans votre dans votre retour de d'impôt dans votre déclaration. Donc la première des choses, j'ai dit vous pouvez vous déplacer peut-être parce que c'est à cause de l'emploi, vous avez trouvé un nouvel emploi dans une nouvelle ville et donc pour cela, il faut que vous vous déplaciez, il faut que vous déménagiez ou bien ça peut être que vous êtes étudiant, vous avez comme été accepté dans une autre université et puis vous avez changé de ville ou bien vous devez déménager pour cette raison-là. Ou bien vous êtes juste un entrepreneur ou bien propriétaire d'entreprise et puis quand je ne sais pas, l'entreprise que vous commencez, le projet que vous commencez, vous trouvez que non. La région dans laquelle vous voulez effectivement vous implanter un peu loin de où vous restez, puis vous devez déménager pour aller, pour vous rapprocher de ce marché, de ce potentiel, de ce marché que vous voulez satisfaire. Ou bien peut-être que c'est les ressources qui sont plus disponibles à un endroit qui est loin de où vous, où vous résidez actuellement et puis vous voulez déplacer. Le truc, c'est que... Il faut qu'il y ait une raison valable qui justifie votre déménagement. Je ne peux pas juste rester parce que je reste dans un basement et puis subitement j'ai un nouvel emploi avec un bon revenu. Maintenant, je vais habiter dans un condo et puis je décide de déménager. Et puis en fin d'année, je dis non, je vais réclamer ça dans mes taxes. Non, 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 ça ne se passe pas comme ça. Il faut qu'il y ait une raison valable pour que vous déménagiez. Il faut que ce soit pour un emploi et que effectivement ce soit justifiable le déménagement. Ça veut dire au minimum le revenu Canada demande que la distance soit au minimum des 40 km pour se rapprocher de nouveaux lieux d'emploi. Ça veut dire si je, je, je réside à Toronto et puis je trouve un emploi à Mississauga, ça met sens du point de vue de Revenu Canada de, payer, de, de rembourser des frais de déménagement parce que vous avez dû déménager de Toronto à Mississauga ou bien vous avez dû déménager. En tout cas, il faut que la distance soit au moins de 40, de 40 km pour vous rapprocher de votre lieu d'emploi, pour vous